All right, so uh, according to Mars, incorporated 20% of its plain M&Ms, candies are orange. Assume that the company's claim is true. Suppose that you reach into a large bag of, bag of plain M&Ms without looking and you pull out eight candies. That X equals the number of orange candies you get. All right, so two parts, two problems dealing with the same scenario. So part A of, you know, 6.5 and 6.6, part A. Explain why it is, it is reasonable to use the binary distribution for calculations involving X. Okay, so we have to show then that this is a binary random variable. So what we should do is check the bins, E-I-N-S. Check that it's binary. Check that it's in the trials are independent. Check that there's a fixed number of trials and then check the success of probability is always the same on each trial. The first one is a binary. So is there a clear defined success and a clear defined failure? So success would be that you get an orange candy. And a failure would just be not orange. Not, see, not, or non-orange, you could say non-orange. So it meets the binary condition. Because either you're gonna you're gonna select a M&M and it's gonna be either be orange or it's not gonna be orange. It's not gonna be like anything else. Independent. Now, here, um, you know, you're given a big bag of M&Ms, and you're basically, you know, in the independent condition is saying that that the probability of getting um an orange M&M on each draw is not gonna be affected by the outcome on the previous draw. So let's say if I picked an M&M &M on my first draw and I got an orange candy, that's not gonna change my chance of getting an orange, uh, orange M&M on my, on my next draw. Now, technically, since it's a bag, you know, that means a bag of M&Ms, that means there's a fixed number of M&Ms. But um, if it's a, we're saying it's a large bag, so if there's like a, let's say a million M&Ms or a billion M&Ms, like a lot, Taking one M&M &M is really not going to change the probability by that much. It's, it's going to be so, you know, so in, in, so tiny that it's not going to matter. Yeah, technically, it's going, to, it's going to affect it, but it's so small that it doesn't even matter. So when it's so small, and we usually use a 10% condition, when usually a sample size is less than 10% of the population, we can assume independence. So this will be met. So we can say n equals eight less than 10% of the population. That's what you would say. We get more into that in the later chapters, but sometimes we'll have like a question or, question or so on this. So the, so the independent condition is met. Fixed number, do we have a fixed number of trials defined beforehand? Yeah, we're told we're gonna pick out eight candies. So eight trials, eight chances to pick out um, uh, orange M and M's, candies M and M's, same thing. So keep on saying candies, and our chance of success. They say that twenty percent of them are orange, so the probability of success is always going to be twenty percent. Again, it's going back to the independent condition. Um, such small eight M and M's out of the entire large bag of M and M's is so small, so we can basically say that it's going to be. Same probability again, orange on each draw. And so then we can say that this is a binomial distribution where n is 8 and p is 0.2. So got that. I interpret the expected value of x. So the expected value of x is another way of just saying find the mean of x. Now you're actually just given a formula, which is n times p. In this case, n is 8, p is 0.2, so the mean of x, or the expected value of x is 1.6. Now, what does that 1.6 mean? Well, it's basically saying that this is the average amount of orange candies you would get when you, drew, when you draw 8. We were to select many, many samples of size 8, you know, we did this a million times, took a million samples of size eight. On average, you get 1.6 orange candies. Sorry, 
or C, find and interpret the standard deviation of X. And there's also a formula you're given this for this, the standard deviation of X, sigma sub X. You can find that by using the formula that says you're gonna take the square root N times P and multiply by one minus P, which would be the square root of eight times 0.2 times one minus 0.2. And you're gonna get about point or 1.13. Now, what does this say? It's basically saying that if you know we were to select many, many samples of size eight M and M's, we would expect to you know have the number of M and M's that we get to be about 1.3 away from the mean amount of M and M's. So 1.3 away or 1.13 away from 1.6. And now it's looking part, let's look at, well, problem 6.6, 6, part A. Still dealing with the scenario. But you'd be surprised if none of the candies were orange. So, again, if we pick eight candies, we'd be, we'd be surprised if none of them are orange. So, we want to find what the probability that if you selected eight candies, you get zero. So probably the X is equal to zero. So we have a binomial distribution where N is eight, P is 0.2, and K is zero. So the number of successes is zero, and PK. Remember, we were, because we already have a binomial random variable, and we want to basically say that you had zero successes. What are the chances this would happen? So we're gonna you can use our calculator, which I recommend. We go to distribution, go to binomial PDF, and you're looking for equal, and the syntax NPK. So N eight P point two K zero. And I'll get point sixteen. Let me write down the syntax here. Binomial PDF. Zero point two zero. Get about a probability of point six two seven seven seven. Now, um, if you have a more uh, newer calculator, newer version, and you won't have to actually memorize the syntax. It's going to probably have space for you enter n, p, and k explicitly. Okay, so now it says that the probability that we would get, um, that we would you know expect to get zero can zero orange candies, um. If we selected eight, it's going to be about 16.7%. Now, it's asking if we would be surprised. Now, now this, again, think of real life. This wouldn't be that surprising because, you know, it is some, we could say it is a low percentage, 16, 17% is kind of low, but it's not so low that it's going to be surprising if it were to happen. You know, it's almost like one every six times. So, you know, like, yeah, it's low, but no, because this probability is not very low. No, the 16.77% is not very low. It's not a very low probability. Not very small, however, where you want to word it. Now, how surprising would it be to get uh, five or more orange candies? So, what would be the probability? Let me move this up. Let me actually do the work over here. Probability that you would get five or more, the probability that X is greater than or equal to five. So what's the probability that you get X is greater than or equal to five? Now, you can use the binomial um, CDF function in your calculator again. Because remember that this basically does, the, or let's go down back. This basically does, um, this, is, this is a cumulative density function. So it does, less than or equal to some number. Now be careful though, because this is, this is greater than. So what we wanna do is find the 
the probability that x is less than or equal to four and subtract that from one because the probability that x is greater than or equal to five is gonna be equal to one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to four. And you're like, again, why do we do this? Because your calculator can't do this. It, can, can't, it doesn't calculate greater than or equal to. It calculates less than or equal to. So in other words, this is just one minus the binomial CDF function. And same sort of deal, the NPK. N is going to be 8. P is 0.2 and K is 4. So again, I have to memorize the syntax. If you, you don't, if you, have, if you have a newer one, you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to enter it all in one shot, it would look like this. But you know, if you do it separately, just you would get bind that you would get the, the binomial CDF of this probability would be about 0.989. And then you can subtract that from one, one minus point. But you can already see it's going to be like virtually 1%. So again, how surprising would it be to get five or more candies? Well, it would you would only have about a 1% chance. So then we would say that, yeah, it, it would be surprising because this only occurs about one in a hundred. And, and um, again, make sure you think of the context. This would be surprising, or you say pretty surprising. Make sure you mention because it would be pretty surprising because we have such a low, because we have, this is such a low chance of occurring. So again, make sure you write your answer in context and demonstrate to you know your teacher or your professor, whoever's grade, and demonstrate to the grader that you know what you're doing. Don't just leave a calculation without any explanation.